If this is your first time coming across my videos, please remember to like, share, and subscribe and enjoy the video. Before I start this video, I would like to give a special shout out to my subscribers who requested this video, Nikki Robinson, Rosa Jones, and Big Ed. Thanks for watching and supporting my videos. Who remembers the group Another Bad Creation, aka ABC, known for their two massive hits, Playground and Aisha? Being natives of Atlanta, Georgia, the group consists of five members. Their names was Romel, Roro Chapman, Chris Sellers, David Shelton, and brothers Demetrius and Marlis, aka Red and Mark. The childhood friends started hanging out in the summer of 1988. They lived in a really bad neighborhood in the ghettos of Atlanta, where there were drugs and gang members. The boys loved to rap and dance, and that kept them out of trouble. They would perform routines on the corner, and hustlers would give them money to keep them out of trouble. Before they became famous, their names was 4K and the Five Sensations. While performing a routine, they met a man by the name of Kevin Wells, who would later change their name to ABC. He introduced the boys to some people who knew some people, and the group would be introduced to the world through Mike Bibbins and his record label, Bib 10. The boys, ranging from ages 8 to 13, was about to make their debut to the world. On February 11, 1991, they dropped their first album titled Coolin' at the Playground, you know, releasing the hit Aisha on October 2, 1990. Mike, along with Dallas Austin, wrote the single, which peaked at number 6 on the Billboard R&B single charts and number 9 on the Hot 100 charts. The song became an instant hit. It had non-stop radio play. It had folks of all ages dancing and singing the hook to Aisha with this catchy New Jack swing beat and the single was a winner from Jump. The group became popular, which led them to travel a lot. The boys were the typical bad little boys, but they knew how to conduct themselves, be professional on the job, and they took their careers very seriously. Then on March 25, 1991, they released their follow-up hit single, Playground. I loved this song as a kid, and so did every other kid on the block. Then they dropped the video to the single. It was high energy with dance routines, and they wore the latest flyest gear out at the time, like starter jackets and airbrush overalls. The video helped the song shoot to number 10 on the Hot 100 Billboard charts, number 4 on the R&B charts, and number 36 on the dance charts. Jermaine Dupree helped choreograph the videos Aisha and Playground. He was working with the team that was established in ABC, but somehow, some way, he got lost in the shuffle and was let go from working with the boys. Just think how further the boys' career would have went if Jermaine would have kept working with them. His resume says it all. Big mistake, big, huge. The boy's album would reach number 7 on the Billboard 200s and eventually went platinum. During this time, Mark and Dave appear in a scene of Michael Jackson video, Black on White. Also during this time, all the members of ABC made their only movie appearance in the movie The Meteor Man. They also showcased in the video for the East Coast family only collective song, One for All, All for One. Riding off their newfound fame, ABC went back to the studio to record their second album. It was titled, It Ain't What You Wear, It's How You Play It. It was released on September 21st, 1993. Two singles was released from this album, I Don't Wanna Be Grown and Where's Your Little Sister. Neither the album or any of the songs charted on any of the Billboard charts. This album didn't do as well for three reasons. Motown was getting bought out by Polygram. Second, the boys said they had miscommunications between their managers. And third, Dallas Austin didn't do any production on the second album. So they felt like their second album was missing that flavor that Dallas put on every track. The song simply wasn't strong as the first album. If they would have kept Jermaine, he could have picked up where Dallas left off. 
Y'all see what Jermaine did with Criss Cross. He wrote their entire album and made their image. Criss Cross turned out to be the more successful group and had a longer career. Well, we all know what happens next. When artists stop charting, they get dropped and the label moves on to the next hot thing. They was dealing with Mike Bibbins, so I'm not shocked. The boys said they wanted to go on tour, but Mike wouldn't let them. Well, we all know why. It was no money in it for him. Let me tell y'all how artists really make their money, touring. When artists go on tour, that's where they make most of their money. And for Mike, it would have benefited them boys more than it would have benefited him. Touring isn't free. The money gotta come from somewhere. Mike didn't wanna shell out the money because he wouldn't make a huge profit, meaning he couldn't get majority of their money. And when they were on the road, ABC and Boys to Men had to shack up in a one room motel with some of them having to sleep on the floor. What I don't understand is why are all of them in one room sharing while having hits on the charts? And why are a group of kids and grown men sharing a single motel room? At some point, Boys to Men had to sleep at Chris' mom's house. Chris is a member of ABC because they didn't have any money to pay for a hotel room. I personally think Mike wanted to put as little money as possible into his artist to maximize his profits because there's absolutely no reason or excuse for him to do this. Imagine being a grown man and having to sleep over at your 12 or 13 year old label mate house because you aren't getting paid enough to provide your own hotel room. When it was all said and done, the boys ended back up in the hood with absolutely nothing, not a check to buy their moms a house or college money. Those boys worked too damn hard to come back with nothing. Mike was once in the same predicament as ABC when he was a child star with New Edition. They got beat out their socks by their label. They had high charting songs and have to go back to the projects with the $1.87 check. You expect for us to split a check for a dollar 87 cents. Are you serious about this? They had a hit on the radio and was still on the free lunch program. You would expect him to look out for the boys because he was once a child star that got robbed blind by the label. They don't have a relationship with Mike today, but Roro said it's no bad blood. But he also said they understood that it was not fair how Mike treated them. They said they understood it was all business. So what he basically is saying is that the music industry would kick you to the curb once they're done with you and you're no longer making hits. Before we go any further, here are some fun facts about ABC. Did y'all know that Boys to Men provided background vocals for their hit song, Aisha? And they had a small beef with Criss Cross started by Jermaine Dupri. Jermaine was upset he was let go from working with the boys, so he started having Criss Cross diss them. They also appeared in the hit TV show and live in color. Keenan Ivory Waynes said they was the new Jackson 5 after they performed their song, Aisha. And last but not least, their idols and friends were fellow boy group, The Boys. The Boys are still good friends until this day. The group had a very short career, but in that short time, they had a hit album, appeared in a movie, set fashion trends, and had kids, teens, and adults dancing to their music. ABC is a part of the urban pop 90 culture and the New Jack Swing era. They will go down as one of my favorite child groups of all time. Thank you for taking the time out your day to watch my videos. And remember, everything on this channel is alleged. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.